All right. Well, I am trying something new with all of you today. Some of you know who I am. My name is Ruth Hill, and I've been running this website for many, many years. Um, it was called My Devotional Thoughts. Then I did a rebranding, and it became Media from the Heart. But the really exciting thing is I'm branching out and trying something new. And so this is my first time. I'm actually doing a video slash podcast. And I have my first ever guest on this. We actually have a virtual audience who we might be seeing a more from later. We have three great audience members here. We might even, that might grow as it goes on here. But I, I don't know about any of you, but I love Hallmark Christmas movies. I mean, I love Christmas. I love Christmas movies in general anyway. And I happened to watch a really great new Hallmark Christmas movie. And as I was watching this movie called One December Night, I saw someone who caught my attention, attention right there at the beginning. She's singing, and I thought, who is this girl? Who is she? And I looked her up, and she is my guest today, Jasmine Forsberg. Jasmine, it is so nice. Thank you for being not only... <laughs> Hello, not only my very first guest on this, I mean, that's exciting, but you did your first Hallmark Christmas movie, your first ever Hallmark movie. So it was yes, so, so I'm, great. I'm so excited to be a guinea pig in so many ways, more than just a guest on this podcast. I feel like my first film was absolutely a grand experiment of sorts, but it, it was an amazing experience. And I'm so excited to talk about it with you. Well, we are so glad to have you, Jasmine. So, so Jasmine, is we first of all, the biggest question that always comes up, what inspired you to get involved with singing, acting? I mean, you kind of do it all. It's like you're a singer, you're a singer, you're an actress. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe, maybe, maybe you probably have more talent than just that. I have no doubt. Uh, but what inspired you to to seek out do um a um what am i trying to say here um why did you want to pursue a career in entertainment i feel like i've always been involved in the arts in some way shape or form when i was a baby when i was two years old my mama put me in dance class because why not and i, I was three when i started taking piano lessons and when I was younger, I didn't particularly enjoy dancing. It was more so, I, it was just something to do. But as I got older, I moved down to Florida and everybody at the music school down there, I was still taking piano lessons, but everybody was also singing. And I would walk through the halls and hear all the singing. And I think I told my mom, hey mama, I wanna sing. I wanna take some voice lessons. So I was about six at the time. And after that point with the piano, with, with um dancing and singing, it kind of was like a natural progression to just try my hand at theater and acting on stage, performing on stage. And um, so we signed up for a production at my local community theater, a youth theater called Magic Curtain Productions. I think they're still around today in Central Florida. And I fell in love. And it was one of those moments where I was only seven, eight years old, and I, I kind of knew that this is what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And I was so fortunate to have parents and family and mentors who supported me and supported my growth throughout that process. But um, I know it's not the most conventional career to go in whatsoever. It is very much you, you have to take a leap of faith. And I'm lucky that I just graduated college and I'm here and I'm, do, I'm living my dreams. So I'm very, very happy. <laughs> Oh, wow. So two years old. You, <laughs> I was, I was going to guess. I was actually going to say, I bet you she's done dance too. I just had that sense. It wasn't just the singing and the acting because so often when somebody pursues a career, I've, I've talked to enough people in this business that I know that you don't just usually do just one thing, but you kind of get to do it all. <laughs> and so, so that's pretty cool. Um, so you've had quite a, you, you you started out really young and you've been involved in different productions here and there as you were, as you were growing up. Um, I love the fact that you said 
that it's not the easiest career. It's not the most conventional career. You have to, it's not, it's, it's not, it's not like um, somebody maybe who, well, I want to be a doctor or a lawyer or, or even a teacher. Th those are roles that, oh, you, you kind of know what direction to go. It's like, okay, I take these courses and then I get here and I get it. But when it comes to entertainment, there's not a clear path. Like I've never talked to anybody who has the same story. They all have a different route of getting there. And so what, so, well, and you said you just graduated um, with, with a degree and did you say it was in, in, in theater? Is that, is that in right? Musical theater. Yeah. In okay. musical theater, Penn State. So why did you, so when you were looking then at going on to college, now not everybody who gets involved in entertainment actually pursues um, a degree that's in line with that. You know, they do a variety of things where they don't even go to school. And here you are, you've actually graduated with a degree in, in, in theater, in musical theater. And so what caused you as you're deciding to go to college what caused you to pursue that that particular degree? Well, you had said something before that I just want to touch on real quick about how there is no real prescribed method towards a a career in in entertainment in the arts, whatever whatever facet you're going for. There there really is none. You you have to. Whereas actually, when I was younger, I wanted to be a doctor. Funny wow. enough, like I say, I say that I I thought that I knew what I, exactly what I was doing, but I wanted to be a doctor for like all the wrong reasons possible. And I'm so grateful that I trusted my my heart and I followed my heart with what I felt my true passions were. And I know sometimes when you mix passion with work, sometimes the lines get blurred. But I'm very fortunate that right now I still love it, and I haven't burnt out yet. I hope I wouldn't. I'm only 22. That would be a little bad, but but. Uh, when I when I decided to major in musical theater specifically, I was actually told I love writing my own music as well, and that's one of the facets of this movie. I was told when I was fourteen that I did I did some sort of workshop with a casting director, and this particular casting director had said, "If you want to, if you want a career in music, that." like musical theater is already such a narrow avenue to go down a lane to go down music is is like 10 bajillion times smaller than that in terms of what success is and like success is obviously so subjective from person to person but but that already in itself was like all right so maybe i'll go with the more conventional route of musical theater even though that's completely not conventional either way but what i loved about musical theater as opposed to just like acting was that it involved all those elements of telling a story through a song and dancing and this is stuff that like I said I grew up doing my whole life it's kind of sort of all I know I never really did sports I never really did anything else this was this was what I feel like I was called to do and when I decided to pursue a career in musical theater um, I was encouraged by some family members to also get a degree in business um, because again not the most conventional route. My my family really wanted me to, you know, be able to support myself. And sometimes you can't do that right out of college when you're performing and, you know, there's the whole idea of the starving artist and having the side hustles and everything like that. And I'm just truly the luckiest and the most grateful that my passion and what I earned a degree in is what I'm working in right now. So it was it was a risk, I would say, but I'm happy with the decisions that I made and I wouldn't change I wouldn't change them at all. Penn State was a phenomenal program to be a part of for musical theater. So, I loved it. That's well, and you answered a question I was going to ask because I was thinking what kind of resistance you might have received from family or I and, and I totally get that because I got a degree in music. And mm -hmm. I had the same kind of resistance from family members, friends. Do you really, you, what are you going to do with music? And, you know, you need to do this. You need, yeah, it's like, yeah, how are you going to support yourself? And, and. Oh, I've heard it all, Ruth. I have heard it all. <laughs> you were, you were preaching to the choir right now. <laughs> exactly. Oh my goodness. Well, um, well, 
the really cool thing I know in, in your story as I was as I was researching you, I think also you were involved in an off Broadway production, I believe. If that's correct. Yes, Could you tell yes. us more about that, please? Absolutely. I'll kind of get into some origin story stuff. Oh, perfect. Uh, um so the production that I was a part of was a show called Broadway Bounty Hunter, and it was written by Joe Iconis, a Tony-nominated musical theater writer, um, Lance Rubin, and Jason Sweet Tooth Williams. And I got involved in that particular production because Penn State has this new musicals initiative where every year the junior class gets a show, meets with a team of writers, and gets a show written for them. My freshman year, one of the shows that was written as a part of this initiative was being produced on like the main stage at Penn State. And Joe Iconis happened to be the writer of that. So my freshman year, I was a part of this production called Love and Hate Nation. And that's how I made my connection with him and with the director of the off-Broadway show, Broadway Bounty Hunter. She choreographed that Penn State production, Jennifer um, Warner. And so that off-Broadway show I was I was 19 years old. It was the summer of 2019, and I I moved to the city for three months. And I knew that it was a temporary thing, so it kind of felt like a a test drive of sorts to see if I really really liked New York City because the city is not for everyone. Sometimes I'm like, is it for me? I don't know. There's so much going on here, but it was one of the greatest experiences that connected me with such beautiful friends. Funny, coincidentally enough, I'm seeing a lot of these people tonight. Um, we're having a little like ho holiday gather gathering. Oh my gosh, holiday gathering. And it's, Joe Iconis has this thing called Joe Iconis and family, where like once you're a part of the family, you're in for life type of thing. And, and it's a wonderful group of people, a support system that I'm so grateful to have because this city is so daunting and um, it was it was a great experience. But the production itself, Broadway Bounty Hunter, was a, it focused on Annie Golden, who has done so many things. She was in the original movie of Hair. She was in um, Xanadu on Broadway. She's done she's done so many things. She was on Orange Is the New Black as the mute character Norma. Um, but it focuses on her a fictionalized version of her going through life as a woman of a certain age and how how everybody looks at her differently and kind of devalues her because she's reached a certain point in her life especially in musical theater where like you can't you can't do as much and she's like no hold up i can do whatever i want but long story short she meets a team of bounty hunters solves some awesome crime i was a bounty hunter i felt so badass it was great um and yeah it was just a phenomenal experience all around and i'm so grateful for it <laughs> wow oh that's really cool that, I, i'm so <laughs> glad that you gave us all the information because i had no idea i i mean that's <laughs> yeah that's that is really amazing you did have a phenomenal program i mean the more you tell me about this program my goodness no that wow i I'm, yeah. I'm almost halfway jealous because I always wanted to be in musical theater. I had this dream when I was growing up um, that I would be in musical theater. Um, and I planned, let's see, I, I wanted to be Christine in the Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> what I wanted to do, that was my, that was my like old dream. And then I was going to go to Broadway and I was going to do all this stuff. And uh, But I'm actually very grateful that I didn't pursue that just because I don't think that that was necessarily my path, but it was, but I think it's great. What's it's, you know, looking at you, it's like, man, you, this, this, you are following, you saw what path you, know, you wanted to go, you're pursuing it and it's really working out for you. I mean, it's, you know, you're having all these awesome experiences and, and so it's great to hear you, you know, you know share that. It's, it's always interesting when you finally, when you're able to find your passion and you pursue it and things start happening and, and um, yeah, so, so, so that's great. So thanks for sharing all that. So um, it wasn't that long ago that you got to make this movie for Hallmark. Now I will tell you, I have talked to many, many, many people. And one of the biggest things that I get messaged about, because they figure that I know everything because I've been interviewing <laughs> for so long. Bruce, how do we get in a Hallmark movie? How do I get in a Hallmark movie? And 
and you're living this dream, Jasmine. Uh, you got into a Hallmark movie. It was your first movie, and it was a Hallmark movie. And not only that, it was a Hallmark Christmas movie. Not only that, you know, you're singing. You're you're with these incredible actors and this whole team. So, how did this happen for you? Can Can you tell a story? Yeah. So I have an agent here in the city who helps me get some auditions for theater projects, for film and TV, and. Film and TV is still something, again, this was my first movie. It's something that is a little more new to me, whereas being on stage has been truly my whole life's work, essentially. Um, but this particular audition came around when I was actually on tour in Colorado, um, and I filmed it. I woke up. My mom sometimes is my reader, so I FaceTimed her, and I set up my phone. I had to, like... <laughs> I had to, like, remove the lampshade off of this hotel lamp. I really hope I didn't break it. Sorry, hotel, if I did. But, like, that was, like, my 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 tripod to set to prop my phone up. And I got the – it was a next day tape. And I got it probably at 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock the night before. And the next day, I happened to have a show. So I was doing a sound check. I was doing rehearsal. It was a very busy day. So I had to wake up at the crack of dawn to get this filmed. Um but I remember some submitting it, not hearing anything. And I knew that it filmed in September. So I was like, okay, well, I'm just gonna let that one go. And I'm on the train, I'm on the Amtrak train from New York City to Connecticut, which is where I had a different gig um, not too long ago. It just finished a few weeks ago. And my agents call me and they're like, so you got the Hallmark movie. And it was so random. It was just so random. But one of those experiences where it was like, they got it to work out. They didn't tell me they found out on a Friday. They didn't call me until a Monday because they wanted to make sure that it would work out with this other job that I was doing. Um, but I think, I think God really had my back when it came to this particular film and having it being my first experience on screen because of the music aspect of things. I am a songwriter. This is what I do. That character was so close to who I was as a person that it felt so easy to just click into it. Um, and so it made it, it made it less nerve wracking because especially in the scenes where I'm just performing, it almost felt like I was just being myself and just having a good time singing on screen for a camera. And it, yeah, the, the audition process though, it was just one side. It was the side where Addison's character is eating pumpkin pie and Eloise Mumford, Quinn in the movie comes up to me. He's like, you can't, we can't do the, the tour. It's not going to happen. And and then I didn't even have my guitar at the time of the audition, so I just sent in some tapes that I had already filmed of, of some folk music um, that I had already filmed for some other auditions. So it was just one of those moments where I think the stars aligned and it was meant to be. But that's how I got this particular job. Wow. Oh, that's, and, and see, that's the thing. What I love about that is you didn't force anything to happen. And I say that only because sometimes people, they they don't they want to work they figure well i'm going to work super hard and i've been guilty of this i mean what i'm talking about i understand you see that okay i want this to happen and i'm going to do this and i'm going to make this happen and i'm going to push it and, and i'm going to do this and i'm going to like push open the doors rather than like waiting for the right time i mean you do the work i'm not saying you did i mean yes you did something well, but sometimes yeah. i and i think we get so excited we're like okay I've got to make it happen and we put a time limit on it and we we say it's, okay, it's got to happen by this time by this time and and you hear those stories about um even famous musicians I mean it, it comes to mind somebody I just had this flash of I can remember Toby Keith who's a country singer you might I don't know if you've ever heard of him before. okay and he tells the story about how he put a time limit on when he was going to be a singer thankfully he extended that because if he would have gone with that original timeline, he wouldn't have been, ever made it in country music or at all. And what I love about what you're saying is you made it, I mean, you, you, the doors opened, you, or, and you weren't sure if they were to remain open, but you went ahead, you did the work and you didn't force anything to happen. It's not like you were um, trying to manipulate things and make them happen, but you were doing the work and then you didn't sit around and worry about it. I love the fact that you just kind of like, you, you you just said, okay, I got it. And then all of a sudden the opportunity drops in your lap and you just 
walk through the doors. And I love that because, because people want me to give them a formula and there isn't a formula to get into a Hallmark movie or to get into these movies. There's, there is no formula. Quite, quite honestly, I don't know if they were looking for me. I don't know. I know that the character Addison is from Alaska. She, she, the originally when they had me send in videos for the singing, it was like they wanted like contemporary folk music. And that's not me as a person. Sure, I could sing that, but like that's not necessarily me to my core. So I feel like the role kind of shifted once, once I came into the picture for them. But I did mention earlier, like, like <laughs> this idea of letting go of things is so much easier said than done, obviously. Um, but I really want to emphasize too, like I, I do truly believe that the stars aligned in some way for this to happen because yes, it is hard work and yes, it is talent, but there is also a bit of luck that goes into it too. And it just has to be the right thing. And and what I've learned, especially in theater, but also like in any in any form of of storytelling, it is very much a puzzle piece, and it's not just dependent on you. It's also dependent on who you're playing opposite and what the cast looks like around you. All of that contributes to. There is like politics that goes into it too. There's all of it contributes to who gets cast in the final the final round. So and who you end up seeing on screen. So yeah, yeah for sure. Exactly. And, and I love the fact that now you're talking about how they may, that the role was envisioned a little bit differently. And I hear this a lot too. So you could have said, when the opportunity came up, you could have said, oh, that's not me. I'm not going to do it. I mean, that's, it's like, okay, that's not me. I've got to find, I've got to find the quote unquote perfect part, the like part that is definitely me. I'm not even going to go for this, but I, but you have that the right idea and I hear it from successful actors all the time that they just the opportunity comes up they go for it and so often and if it's meant to be right then that that role gonna get to rewritten I mean I've heard about roles who let's see what was it there was an actress that I interviewed who she the character she was going for was a 60 year old man and they completely <laughs> they could and this is and this is Hallmark again they completely rewrote the role when she auditioned for it. She mm -hmm. auditioned for it and they're like, oh, we don't want a 60 year old man anymore. We want this lady and we're gonna change. I mean, you know, she's like in her thirties or forties or something and they completely rewrote the roles for her because they were, and, and so it sounds like maybe you weren't who they originally envisioned but you came along and they're like, oh, we like Jess and we like what she's bringing to, it. let's adjust the role for her and let her come on. So that's pretty cool. I like yeah. that. I like sure. it. And I like that you didn't limit yourself. I really, really like that. Like you were just totally open and, and that's great. So, so when it came to filming now, where did, now, where did you guys film this movie? We filmed in upstate New York. We were in Newburgh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. It was cool. a very cute town that we were filming in. Very Pineville-esque. <laughs> okay. That's great. And so how many days were you actually on set? Were you I was only on set for three days. Okay. And it's also two. I think it, there would have been a fourth. There was the whole, entire movie was filmed in 15 days. They have a formula. They, okay. We might not have the formula for getting cast in a Hallmark movie, but they have the formula for how to make a Hallmark movie. It's a machine, it feels like. Um, but I got on set on day eight. So it was already, you know, everybody knew each other. There was already a familiarity on set. Um, and it was nice to come in and and meet everyone. It was very overwhelming at first, I, I will say, because it, it moves so slow yet so fast at the same time. Um, whereas with theater, you usually are with a project, not necessarily from the very beginning of the show itself, but like from day one of rehearsals, usually everybody's there and you kind of create this camaraderie together. Whereas on set, you're kind of just like, you, you show up when you're called type of thing. And it's not necessarily everybody's there every single day because they could not probably have the budget for that. <laughs> but if the days that I was there, we, we jammed a lot of material into each day. They were long filming days. Yeah. All that, yeah. And that sounds, you, it's, it's really great to hear you say that because you're echoing so many of the things that I've heard from everybody who, 
plays maybe just has one even is even an extra i've talked to extras uh who were in hallmark movies as well as the leads and i hear that same thing there's a formula you do it in 15 days i mean all these different things um and and, but also, what was the overall atmosphere? Like, you know, you come to set on day eight. Now, that's a little bit, like you said, everybody knows each other. So, and it was a little bit overwhelming at first. But what was the overall atmosphere? How did you perceive that? It was a little hard to gauge at first because, again, this was my first movie. So, I really had no comparison point from film to film. I will say when we first got on set, I, I think we might have been a little bit behind schedule. So there was a sort of like, we got to get this done aspect to the first day of being there. But there was also, hi everyone, this is Jasmine. She's joining us. She's our Addison. And I felt so welcomed too. So even though, hi doggy. Oh my gosh, hi. Um, so even though, um, even though there was that sense of, okay, we got to get this done. There was also a moment where everybody was like, it's so great to meet you. I felt so welcomed. Um, yeah, absolutely. A mix of both. It was it was kind of overwhelming just for me as a human. For any other actor, who knows what it, the experience would have been like. I'm sure it's personal to who you are and the experiences you've had. No, but but that's great. I figured that they would welcome you and, and there's and and that's so that's good. And and the whole thing about being behind is I, I I, I guess I have so many friends who are actors, and so that just becomes like the normal thing among the arts. It seems like very rarely are things, I, I, I know there are exceptions, but it always it seems like very r rarely are we ever completely on schedule. It seems like we're, <laughs> maybe it's different in theater, but at least so many of my friends I feel like we're always behind, like we're always playing catch up. It's like, okay, we're supposed to be here. And, oh, now we got to, you got to really race to get caught up. I, I don't know. If, I don't know. <laughs> Has that been your experience too? So is it, that it tends to be, I, I think we tend to want to cram so much into a short period of time. We're so excited and like, we want to get this and we, we overestimate. I know I do it too still. Um, has that been your experience? <laughs> No matter where you are, no matter what medium it is, no matter where you are in your process, I feel like everybody thinks that moment is like the highest stakes thing there ever was. So it's just a product of your environment, I would say, because if everybody feels that way, then of course the tension is going to be like constantly raising. That being said, again, with more of a theater background, Theater is so strange in that we, our schedule is pretty consistent during the rehearsal process, but once you go start and tech a show, they have these things called 10 out of 12s where you're literally rehearsing. You have a 12 hour day with a two hour dinner break, but like you're there and, and on set too, you have these crazy overtime hours. I mean, when I was, when I was filming, like right around the time that we were um, wrapping one December night, there was actually a strike with IATC and they were demanding, which is the labor union that represents a lot of the crew members on movies and and in film and TV and whatnot. And um, there was a strike that was occurring because they demanded better treatment because of the overtime that they put in, safer working conditions. I mean, there's just, it's, there's, it's constantly moving and I'm only one piece of the equation here. And I'm the one who's seen and I get the applause, but really the applause goes to everyone because it takes a village. It really does take a village in absolutely every single way. So yeah, I understand why there's tension and why we feel like we're behind schedule, but um, it's sometimes you just got to breathe and, and trust that it'll all come together, which it, it usually 99.9% .9 of the time always does. So oh, yeah. definitely. And this movie <laughs> definitely came together. I mean, I, I love the fact that the story was a little bit different. It was related to music. I mean, I'm always watching Hallmark movies and and I love the that inclusion of music and so now did you have was there was there a special um scene that was like a special memory for you? Uh, when uh was you, did you have a favorite scene or some special behind the scenes memory? I would say one of my favorite scenes was filming the big concert scene at the end because watching Peter Gallagher and Bruce Campbell just like absolutely live their lives and, and talk to the audience and just kind of sort of be themselves in a way, but but not. Um, 
that was so beautiful to watch. And also, I feel like everything was leading up to that big final scene. Like, this is what made Hallmark Christmas movie magic. Like, that that particular scene is why people watch Hallmark Christmas movies. And that final concert scene was just so beautiful and special. And it was one of my first times hearing the songs that they got to sing in the movie, too. And uh, there were a lot of extras on set. And I got to hang out with Dee Dee Khan, which was always so fun. Uh, she told me actually, cause she knew, I, I think I had I mentioned to her that this was my first film experience. And she said to me, um, well, if you ever need a hug at any time, I'm available for them, come to me. I can give you hugs tax free. I was like, oh my God, Dee Dee oh. Khan, I will hug her any day. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. Okay. That's, that's, that's so good to hear. That's cool, yeah. Um, so speaking of then, if we if we look at that scene and you have all these people, what, of course, now with, we're living in COVID times where it's like, that's a constant thing. We, we have all the different COVID protocols that of course the industry has put in place. So how mm -hmm. did that affect your filming? Was that, was that a major concern? Every time that I was on set, I was, I, mean, I was only there three days, so I'm actually not sure how it worked for everybody else, but they were testing, everybody got PCR, rapid PCR tests in the mornings before anything happened, before they really came in contact with anybody. Anytime you weren't filming, you were wearing a mask. All of the crew members were wearing masks. They were very, very diligent about that. Um, and I felt safe the entire time that I was there. Also too, a lot of my scenes were filmed outside, so I felt particularly safe. Um, but everybody did a really good job of, of being mindful that if anything happens, we can't film the movie. So, so they were really understanding on people's own security and, and what makes them feel safe and comfortable. But they're also really just strict period about you have, you must get tested. You must wear a mask. Um, that was pretty widely accepted amongst the it, the crew and everyone involved in that experience. It was a, a mutual understanding for sure. That's good. And that's good to hear that everybody was on the same page with that because mm -hmm. I, 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 I know I've not talked to anybody that's ever had issues that now and then you'll hear, oh, well, that the protocols weren't followed on this set or you, you, you hear whisperings of different things. So it's good to know that you guys were all on the same page that, that, mm -hmm. that I think that goes a long way. If y'all are on the same page, you all are doing the same thing and, and you're really strict of it and following everything. That's good. I'm, 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 I'm glad everybody was safe and, and you felt safe. And so when this movie came out, did you have any kind of watching party? Like, did you get together with family, friends, whatever the case was? So this movie came out. I don't have cable. So watching this movie was a little bit of a challenge to figure out how to watch it. But I signed up for a free trial for some subscription service. And I was able to get some cable. And mm -hmm. I was doing a show at the time in Connecticut called, uh, called A Grand Night for Singing. I was working at the Goodspeed Opera House. Mm -hmm. And that show was going on for three months. So my cast who I was with actually like saw me, we met, I filmed the movie and then we got to watch the movie together all within like this three month period of time, which is crazy to me. The turnaround was so fast, but um, they, we had a, we had a show that night. It got out at 10 o'clock. We rushed on over to one of our houses on the Goodspeed property and um, we watched it. It was, we had to start it a little late, but we had a little cast get together and it was so fun. And the support that I felt and the love that I felt was always so, so, oh, it just makes you, it gives you the warm and fuzzies inside. And then my family in Florida, they had a watch party too. And I was getting texts from my brothers and my stepdad with a big picture of everybody watching me on TV and their hands are all up cheering and it's the cutest thing. It was, it was so, so special. Um, the, the support that I felt that night, um, for sure. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. That's good to hear. Now, something I had mentioned to you and we talked before, um, was so you're a musical theater person and now you're doing a hallmark movie and, and 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 of course you're able to still keep up with musical theater and you know hopefully we'll see you in more movies but it seems to become a trend amongst uh, especially over the past couple of years that people are coming from musical theater to do hallmark movies and what's really something what's phenomenal it used to be 
because I'm I'm a student of old Hollywood and it used to be, well, if you're a musical theater, we don't want you in movies. That used to be like I'm saying, well, you just are in the theater, we don't want you, you know, we don't want you I mean, because how many times of I mean, a perfect example is um they refused to put Julie Andrews in My Fair Lady because she was the original lead and they were like, Well, you we can't you can't you you're not gonna make it on films or whatever the case is. But that seems to have changed and Hallmark is like People are coming from musical theater. Patty Muir and Laura Austin, as all these people are coming, and there's there's many more. I don't even know all of their names that are coming from musical theater to do Hallmark movies. I'm seeing a lot of that. So, and here you are, musical theater, and you're coming to make a Hallmark movie, and you just seem to be a natural. That's what I see. I've been watching these people from musical theater, and they just like fit effortlessly into Hallmark movies. And I mean, that's, that's what I saw with you. That's what I've seen with all of these actors. So do you have any theories or ideas why musical theater actors seem to be just perfect fits for Hallmark movies? I feel like Hallmark Christmas movies specifically, I don't know. I don't know about Hallmark as a whole, but with Christmas movies, there is a, it's a specific genre and, and there is a sense of warmth that needs to be conveyed on the screen and I feel like with people with musical theater like yes we are used to like telegraphing things much bigger for like 2,000 people as opposed to oh the camera's literally a foot away from your face right now and and but I feel like you know actors in general bring themselves to these roles and and they they put their heart into it but I, I don't you know with musical theater specifically I just feel like it's I don't know if I really have an answer to it. I'm trying to like rationalize it a little bit, but quite frankly, I just think that with Hallmark movies, there is a sense of warmth that needs to be conveyed um, to give you that warm Christmas holiday feeling that that you need at the end of a Hallmark movie because that's what they're there for. You want to just feel good. And I think with musical theater actors, it's something that is easy to access, perhaps. But But, but quite frankly, I don't... I don't know if I have a perfect answer to that because it, it it probably will vary person to person. I'm so sorry. I don't know if I can answer that one for no, you. No, no. <laughs> it's and I don't know if there is necessarily an answer. It's just an interesting trend that I've noticed, and I love it because I'm getting introduced to musical theater actors because I don't always. If you don't live in New York, sometimes it can be hard to see these musical theater actors you might have heard of them if you happen to watch the tony awards or if they appear in something else but it cannot mm-hmm. it's not as easy to learn about some of these people and so i love that hallmark's doing it and i'm all for it because give them the opportunity to get in front of the screen and then they can go back and they can do theater and they, they can do it all so i don't know if there was i was curious and i love hearing your perspective so that's great yeah um well, sometimes too i mean the i mean this particular movie filmed in upstate new york when I was in Connecticut, in some of the surrounding towns, there were other Hallmark Christmas movies being filmed at that exact same time. And so New York is obviously significantly closer to Connecticut and upstate New York than, like, New York City, I mean, than L.A. is. So so perhaps that even might have something to do with it. It could be even proximity. So I know for this specific role, I think they were looking for a New York local hire. Um so it worked out for me. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, no, I, I, I think you might have a point there I, because they are, it used to be that Hallmark was only filming in LA or Canada and now they have really broadened so much. And so for whatever reason, I don't know if there's necessarily an answer, but I love hearing your perspective, what you had to say. It, yeah, we don't have an answer, but these are some thoughts. And I think that's great because there's, because it is going to vary from person to person. So as we go forward, now you've had this incredible Hallmark movie. I know you sing, you have a gorgeous voice, you write music, all those things. So what, what then is next for you, Jasmine? I 1000% in the cards would like to record an EP of my own original music so that others can listen to it and share and share this experience that I want to to give the world. Um, I love writing. That has been something that I've been doing since I was eight, nine years old. My best friends when I was growing up, I would make them listen to me on the piano. 
<laughs> and were the songs any good? Unlikely, but they still listened because they were supportive friends. But so that's something that I would absolutely love to do. That's like in the ether. Eventually it'll happen, but there's actually something that is coming up that I can't tell you all about today. But if you follow me on my socials, an announcement hopefully within the new with the upcoming new year uh, will be made about an, another big, big, big project that I'll be working on. And maybe it'll come to a city near you. I can't say it'll come to Germany. It will not be coming to Germany, but but it will be in America. So so we'll we'll keep an eye out for that one. Well, that sounds exciting. So mysterious, and, I know. Yeah, oh, no, no, but that's, well, that's the nature of the business. We know that. There's all these things, you know, it's not just you. Actors regularly have to, you know, they can't say anything. Writers, directors, I mean, there's so many people who can't say anything. So we're used to that. And <laughs> um, so, but that sounds really exciting. I'm just sitting here thinking, you are 22, just graduated from college. All the, you have all, I mean, this is incredible. Your success um, is really, now this just comes from me. I'm not saying that I know everything, but from all the people I've interviewed and stuff, your success is somewhat unparalleled. I will say that seriously, because lots of times, I mean, I will tell people, in fact, I was just talking to a young actor this weekend and I was saying, yeah, they usually say it takes about seven years before you really start getting established and you start getting some of these roles. You know, you're doing a lot of little tiny bit roles and commercials and different things. And, and I said, and, and I said that maybe if you're really lucky, you know, it'd be five years, but and then sometimes it can take all the way up to 10 years and you know, all these different things, just from different things I've gleaned from all these years of interviewing people in the industry. And then there's you, Jasmine. And, and just the success you're already having and the dreams that you're already seeing that are happening. I mean, I'm just, I am honestly blown away by your success. And the, and the, and the fact that you're also so kind and giving and well-spoken I'm um and I love your positive spirit your vibrance and I'm sure that if I were to ask our audience members here they would agree that you are so much fun to just watch and, and listen to I I mean it it's it's not like you know, you're so you're so happy about what you're talking about. You're, you're authentic. You're not trying to put on a show. And we really appreciate that. I mean, if, when I say put on a show, I mean, you're, you're showing us who you really are. Yeah, I know. When you act a part, that's different. But I'm just <laughs> meaning we're seeing who you really are. And you're not afraid to share with us who you are. And I really appreciate that. Well, I appreciate you you acknowledging that because I I really do intend on being myself because if you're not if you're not being genuinely who you are, what is the point? Like why wear this mask? I don't know. Who are who are you trying to impress? I mean, sure, actors are trying to impress the world maybe, who knows, but but I feel like and thank you for everything that you said, truly. I feel like I had just little little tangent, side tangent. Over the weekend, I had seen two friends, one of which I have not seen in eight years, and then the other I have not seen since I was 11. So 10, 11 years now. Um, and it was so shocking to me, the impact and what I remembered about them and the impact that they had on me and the fact that we could not necessarily pick up right where we left off because I was 11 and I was 15 uh, when I met these other people, but it just goes to show that these people that you interact with in life, like every interaction can mean something. And I feel like this industry is so much about what you know and, sorry, sorry, who you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and all these people, like if you have an army of people in your corner, that can really help you. But you, do, you can't treat it as though you're trying to get something from people because they're going to see right through that. That's inauthentic. But if you just want to have genuine relationships with people and be kind and and have friends then it makes things so much easier because every but because people will want to support you after that and that's one of the things that I've learned is just not you know 
be, like truly treat others the way you want to be treated if you want to be treated like dirt then sure go treat other people like dirt but but it is so much easier just to be nice and kind because there is a difference between the two being kind so yeah, yeah. and that's why you were in hallmark movies because what you just said is actually um what one of the people in the high ups of hallmark when i've talked with them i remember one of them saying to me you don't have to be mean. It's easier just be kind. It's not really that hard to be kind to people. I mean, and, and I know some people would want to argue about that, but I love what you just said. I mean, what you said goes right in line with what Hallmark is all about. It's, it's, you're treating people the way you want to be treated and, and you don't have to, yeah, yeah. I know we all have bad days and we have difficulties and challenges and we might say something that we don't mean to say. I mean, we're not, we're not perfect. We're human, but it is so much easier. Really. It's not that hard to be kind to somebody. Yeah. You have to think about, it. I think that's the hard thing. You have to be intentional about it. You have to mm -hmm. actually say, okay, I'm going to choose to be nice or kind to this person. Even if maybe they seem like they might be having a bad day or they might maybe Maybe they didn't smile at me. I'm going to smile at them and I'm going to ask them, you know, how are you? Or I'm going to say thank you or have a nice day. I'm going to say something nice to them, even if they just aren't even looking at me. And it makes all the difference in the world. So I love that you said that. I love that you said that. So thank you. It just um, makes things easier for you as a human. Like I pass thousands of people a day living in New York City on these streets and you never know what anyone is going through. And Lord knows people don't know what I'm going through on a day-to-day -day basis. So when people treat me with kindness, that it impacts people and, and you can have such an effect on people without realizing it. And so every interaction can mean something to you if you let it, in a good way. I mean, also in a bad way if you let that too, but it's much easier to just make it be, be positive for yourself. <laughs> right, exactly. So. Well, I do know I've got three audience members here and maybe either we've got Linda, we've got Joanne, we've got Patina. Would any of you, do any of you have question, a question that you might want to ask Jasmine? All right, Joanne, were you going to come on? Did I see you, you were going to come on maybe? Do you want to, if you, un okay, yeah, go ahead. No, I just wanted to say you are just a joy to watch and listen to and I wish you the best career ever. And I hope you're in a lot more Hallmark movies and a lot more musical opportunities for you. So thank you. Just, where, just where a joy. Are where are you in, in the world? Um, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Linda and I both are. Okay. All right. <laughs> Going to keep that in mind in case this magical thing. Yeah, I'm, just, I, I'm, I'm hoping maybe Pittsburgh is on. We have a really good cultural city here. So. <laughs> Thank Lots you. of wonderful things happen here. But, so I'll be watching for you. Thank you so anyway, much. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And Joanne is a good one to have in your corner. I actually all three of these ladies. I, I, I've got I've got some incredible people I've gotten to know. And these three ladies are certainly three of those. They're the cream oh, of the crop. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, Linda, did you have a question? Yes, I'd like to know how you said we could follow you. Do you have a link or see how you show up on Instagram or wherever you are? Here, I'll throw it if I can do this. I'll throw it in the chat for okay. those listening. <laughs> it's Jasmine underscore Forsberg, um, just my name. And okay. also linked there is like a, a another in my bio on that account is another account that I kind of post music on if you ever want to hear some of that stuff, okay. Jasmine Forsberg music. I'm pretty frequent on Instagram, mm -hmm. but um, I actually just recently deleted all my social media so I could go on a little bit of a cleanse before the holidays, <laughs> uh, just, just for like a couple weeks probably, just to, to give myself some air before, you know, reapproaching this new year and and going at it with full force. But I'll be back. Don't you worry, I'll be back. <laughs> Thank you. And where where were you born and raised? I was born in Chicago, but I was raised in Florida. Orlando is considered home for me. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I've been kind of all over. No nowhere kind of near the West Coast, but <laughs> but East Coast has my heart for sure. Okay. 
Sorry, Ruth. Good, good answer. <laughs> Since there's yeah. two of us, three. No, that's great. Um, and and Jasmine, I'll be sure that when I post this, that I'll have all of your information because because you also have a website. Um, I do believe mm. as well. Actually, my website is probably what is the most professionally speaking, like up to date with what I'm doing. You can yeah. always be sure to see what I'm doing. If you need to contact me in any way, like all of that is there. And that's just www.jasmineforsberg.com. So check it out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that, cause that's how I got in contact with you is I always love it when people have a website and, and, and for those who wondered why Jasmine said dog, well, that's, it's because we have we one of our audience members because I think she said, Oh, what a cute dog at one point and I thought so now we can see that Joanne has this really cute dog and that's that's what <laughs> that's why. So mm -hmm. but you see we don't we actually have four because see we have we have a dog. Hey, we have a dog in the audience. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> don't always get that on these shows. Um but Tina, oh, would you cute. like to say anything? Is there is there a question or a comment? Would you like to join the dialogue? I don't have a question, but uh, I really enjoyed the conversation, and I I checked your website out before before this, <laughs> because oh. like Ruth, so I I really think a, a good website is uh, yeah you have to have this uh, in these times. So um, and yeah, the website is really great, very informative, and uh, <laughs> yeah, and I'm uh, curious what is coming next year from you. Yeah, and I definitely have to watch that movie. So. Um, yeah. There are so many at the moment. <laughs> it's, it's, it's hard to get every every Christmas movie at the moment, but oh, um, yeah. I I have to look that one up. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And Bettina knows the thing about thing about too about websites because she's been busy designing a website. So for her to say that it's a good website, you can take her word for it. She's, Thank she's, you so much. She's pretty Thank great. you. I'm yeah. honored, truly. Really. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Jasmine, I don't know if you would feel comfortable just singing even like a snippet for us. If you Ooh, oh, Ruth, now that you say that, now that I'm uh, here, I actually have my guitar next to me. Oh my goodness. Well, no, that's yeah. pretty cool. Okay. I'm just going to put the lady, the others on mute just so we can make sure we, we hear your, your, your music. Um, Let's do it. I'll, I'll give you a little bit of Fa La La, which is the song that um, I wrote um, when I was 16, never thinking for a second that it would end up in a movie, never thinking for a second that I would be the one singing it in a movie, but it's called Fa La La. <laughs> Please come home this Christmas Eve it's been so long since I have seen you. Fa la 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 la, I'm missing you. Try to find another, but another won't do. Fa la la, the thought of losing you drives me insane, but it won't go away when the ground turned white. You left my sight, couldn't find you anywhere. Through the falling snow, I searched high and low. All of December, do you remember those pretty lights dangling so bright, twinkling like summer stars? I want to be where you are. I want to give you my heart So please come home this Christmas Eve It's been so long since I have seen your smile It's been a while, it's been a long time coming You gotta tell me something have you been thinking of me this winter season? Ooh, fa la 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 la. Have you been thinking of me this winter season? Oh my goodness! And I'm just, I'm just actually 
trying to unmute people because that was so amazing. So if you guys want to unmute, you, you guys can unmute if you want to tell her just how amazing. Yeah. Oh, that was gorgeous. Oh it's so good. That song was in the movie, but not that verse. Actually, the second oh, verse is what made its way in. So I, I do remember now that you sang it. I do remember it. So. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad yeah. to hear it. Oh. So beautiful, Jasmine. So beautiful. Oh, Jasmine. It was yeah. Very nice. Now you guys know why I invited Jasmine because oh. actually, it was when I heard her sing, I'm like on IMDb, who is this person? I've got to know who this person is because once I heard her sing, I mean, she's, you know, she's gorgeous, but then once I heard her sing, I'm like, well, and then it's like right away, it's like before the movie's even over, I'm checking out her website. I'm reaching out to her saying, okay, I have this idea. Let's just connect. And I wasn't sure. Uh, and so then she was, she was so kind to come on and, <laughs> and be the first one on whatever I'm gonna, I don't even know what I'm gonna call this show at this point. <laughs> We're not even sure, but, but. Well, thank you for inviting us, Ruth. That was really neat. Oh, it was awesome. I yeah. so thoroughly enjoyed it. So Jasmine, it's just a little wrap up. What are you, do what are your plans for Christmas? Can you tell us? I'm heading home to the holidays. I'm gonna be a snowbird for uh, the holidays. I'm going to Orlando and my father's down in Sarasota. So I'm gonna enjoy the sunshine, maybe get a little bit of a tan going on. It'll be <laughs> great. Yeah, that's, that's the plan for me. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, I'm so glad. And Jasmine, I mean, and we all are so grateful. It's thank Thank you to my wonderful audience members for being here because it made it so much fun. It gave it a little different vibe. I've done these interviews where it's just two people, but having even just a few other people made it feel like we were, we, it, it was fun for me. And I think it was fun for mm -hmm. Jasmine too, just having, having, yeah. and having some other participants. And so I'm so grateful that this worked out and thank you all for being here. Jasmine, you are a superstar. I am looking Thank for you, big things. You let us know when your album happens, that EP, because I, I have will. a feeling that all of us will buy it. <laughs> I really mm -hmm. do. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And so we'll be. Did we'll you go to Penn State? That. Oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead, Joanne. No, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, did you go to Penn State main campus? Yeah. Penn State uh, University. That's, that's just an hour and a half from me. Mm hmm Yeah. That's, it's a great I know school. lots of people that went to Penn State, but not in theater that I know. I would fly into Pittsburgh, actually. Pittsburgh was closer to get to than Philly for that. Mm -hmm. so. Absolutely. So I would take the mega bus. Oh, I know that life. <laughs> <laughs> this is just fantastic. And then we have kind of this time at the end where we could just be sharing. And it really feels like we had this great experience. So I just love it. Jason, thank you for for joining in and thank you to Linda, Joanne, Bettina, and I bet you will have more because I, I just, so you guys know, I've already got one scheduled for next week. I already have, I think yeah. we're going to start doing more of these. So I'll let you guys know. And, Absolutely. Uh, and right. Jasmine, thank you again. Safe travels and thank you. Merry mm -hmm. Christmas. And thank you for blessing us with that song. That was just, that was, that I'm so happy I could share it with you. Thank you so much, everyone. Happy holidays. Yes. Happy, happy holidays. Merry happy Christmas. Holidays. Happy holidays. Safe holidays. travels. Bye -bye. And, uh, and have a great have a week. The weekend's coming up. So thank you all again. And I will I, and I will let you know when this gets posted. So all right. Hey. Thank you all. Have thank a great you. day. Thank and you for the invite, you. Ruth. And Jasmine, you're just a joy. Thank you. Yeah, you are. Yeah. All right. All right. Bye-bye. 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 Bye. 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 Bye